It said that three things can't be hidden for long. The sun, the moon, and the truth. Actually, Lord Buddha said that. So here we're reading about how the soul is present within all living entities, whether they're a cow, dog, dog eater, elephant, doesn't matter. Uh, the soul is equal and it's currently covered in this entrapment, in this material machine made of the different modes of material nature due to our different desires. So currently in school systems, this knowledge of the soul is not really being taught. They try to cover it up, but like Lord Buddha says, three things cannot be covered for that long, the sun, the moon, and the truth. And this is one of the reasons why we go out and try to give people higher consciousness, higher knowledge to educate them on the soul, teach them something that they are not learning presently in their schools and classrooms. I was driving the other day, going out on book distribution, and I saw a, a, a sign on the freeway and it said, slow down and save a life. And I was thinking, I have all these books in, my, uh, in the trunk of my car. So that sign says, slow down and save a life. But I was also thinking, you know, if I speed up, I also save a life. Because these people, uh, you never know who you're going to give a book to. And, you know, every, every person is valuable. Every moment is valuable. Of course, that didn't speed up. You know, we try to follow the laws of the government and uh, be law-abiding citizens. But that's how valuable these books are. These books uh, save people from material existence, which is what we're here to do. A uh, few, few days ago, we celebrated Lord Nursing Hadir's appearance. And uh, we not only glorified Lord Narsingha, but we also glorified Bhakta Prahlad. Because Lord Narsingha is a half man, half lion who wore uh, garlands of veins uh, of Hiranyakashipu, very terrifying form. Actually, everybody was scared of Lord Narsingha Dev. Even the demigods, they were very fearful to approach Lord Narsingha Dev. But Bhakta Prahlad, he said, Oh Lord Narsingha Dev, I am not at all scared of your form. I'm actually scared of material existence. So material existence uh, is very scary. And why? There's always these constant calamities happening over and over and over again. I just read about one kid, he's like 18 or 19. At 10 o'clock a.m. he had a Diet Coke. At 10.45, 11, he had like a latte from Starbucks. At 11.30 a.m. He had an energy drink, a Red Bull, and at 12 o'clock he died. Just a, just a college kid passed away from overdose on caffeine. I also read about, there was a, another college student and they have these fraternities in college. And sometimes these fraternities make you do very silly things. So this fraternity was making all the aspiring fraternity members uh, go out on a drinking run. So you'd go to one station, drink a bunch of whatever they had there, beer, alcohol, go to another station then, quickly run, then they had wine, then go to another station, shots, all these different um, liquids, intoxications, toxic taking toxic in and this particular kid just had so much that he, he fell down a flight of stairs and the fraternity members didn't do anything about it 
and the kid was just laying there and hours and hours passed and they still didn't do anything about it finally the next morning they went to check up on him and they they saw that he needs serious help so that's when they took him to the hospital I believe and he also left his body and his parents were of course completely shocked and outraged and they decided to start a, a movement to stop kids from overindulging or even taking alcohol in college but I was just thinking how Krishna consciousness it solves all these problems in one shot caffeine overdose alcohol abuse religious violence racial violence greed theft so many things get solved when you have Krishna consciousness just like in the mornings currently we're learning about Krishna in a particular pastime called the Brahma Vimohana Lina and it is said in the Brahma Vimohana Lila that Krishna has a particular name where by one activity he does he accomplishes many purposes <clears throat> we just read that so in the same way this Krishna consciousness movement with this one movement we accomplish so many things uh, we, we stop so many problems of the world I was actually uh, looking on a very notable website Business Insider they were talking about the 10 most critical problems of the world and I was just going through each uh, one with my Sankirtan partner Brigupati Prabhu and we were just seeing how Krishna consciousness solves all these problems one of them was uh, water scarcity and food uh, so Brigupati Prabhu was telling me how many uh, gallons of water they use just to clean the the blood of animals this is where all the water is being used and then we complain about a water shortage so this world needs help it's material existence and there's a lot of problems people associate with their skin color so much they think that they're white and they'll kill a black they think they're black they'll kill a cop so many problems are going on recently I was at the festival of colors and I saw that nobody here is black or white everybody looks like a rainbow they had all these colors on them and I was thinking wow you know they're all happy joyous it was like a conscious festival this is what we need we need more people to understand that they're rainbows and we have to help them in bringing their colors out so that's what these books do that's what this movement does that's what this type of consciousness does to people it, so it solves the major calamities of the world so for those who think that Krishna consciousness isn't so relevant it's actually extremely relevant because sometimes even myself I will play uh, what do you call it the kind of like devil's advocate and I would try to challenge myself and say okay so so what are you really doing for the world are you really helping people what is it that you're giving them and then that's what makes me look into these things like what are the problems of the world deforestation that's another one that's actually the number one problem in the world that's been voted uh, that all these rainforests are being cut down trees are being cut down do you know why these trees are being cut down what's the reason why they're uh, defore deforestizing so many uh, trees okay Pr Prima Sankirtan says news magazines reading material do you have a guess Shamakun? okay Shamakun says human civilization houses actually the number one reason why they're cutting all these trees down is uh, to raise cattle <laughs> it's that's what we call a lose-lose situation 
So they're cutting down trees to raise cattle. So it's kind of depressing when we think about it. It's kind of depressing how we think about the world when we really put it into perspective. But it gives us a great opportunity, a great chance to be servants of saints, be servants of heroes, and also go out and try to do something for the world. So this is what our movement is offering. We're giving people a chance to move in the right direction. Recently we launched a new website called beamonk.org and it's really amazing. It's really amazing. <clears throat> Basically <clears throat> when you go on this website you have an uh, opportunity to fill out an application to try and live in a temple for a few days. This idea actually came a long time ago before the website was even existing. And so I would tell people when I would meet them on book distribution that we have this retreat program and that you can come to the temple for a few days and see what it's like to be a monk. So the first one who tried that up, his name was Buck the Manny. And I met him at a college called Citrus College, which is uh, somewhere in Glendora, Pomona, eastern side of uh, LA. And me and Brigupati Prabhu just spoke to him and we went back to that school the next day and he came with us, he brought all his stuff. Uh, and then he stayed until from Thursday till Sunday. He stayed at the temple. And he wrote a very nice testimonial on Monday, just explaining about his experience, how he felt, what it was like. He's never even had something like this before. And then I didn't hear from him for a long time. And I was wondering, how is, how is he doing? So last week, I went back to that college and I texted him and I said, hey, I'm at your campus. I want to come see you. So he came and we embraced, we hugged. It was very nice. And then I asked him, so do you ever miss the temple? And he told me, I can't stop thinking about it every day. Every day I'm thinking about the temple. I'm just waiting when I can go back. He has some obligations, some duties, but such an impact in his life. And then our, I would consider this one of my, uh, one of our greatest success stories for the Be a Monk project. Uh, his name is Bhakta Original. Bhakta Original, we met him uh, in November and same same situation uh i gave him a bunch of books he seemed, seemed very sincere i saw him again the next day he told me he's on page 36 he was already reading the book uh, he was even convinced of becoming a vegetarian just that next day and he tried to be a monk program and he he, he fell in love uh, but again i didn't hear from him at all and just just last week or two weeks ago uh, he's he's moved into the temple full-time shaved up 16 rounds a day doing full-time service and he's extremely happy he told me that he used to wake up and hear people yelling now he wakes up and hears people singing to God he used to wake up and smell filth wherever he was now he wakes up and smells flowers offered to God. And he told me on top of that, he gets to eat like a king. So this is Krishna consciousness. Welcome to a higher reality. He sent me this text yesterday night. And I just wanted to read it. It's very small. But I thought it was very meaningful. He said, everything that I see seems to be illuminated with Krishna. It's a beautiful miracle I couldn't even begin to describe. So this is how beautiful Krishna is. I tell people on book distribution, 
when they uh, open the books and they say who's Krishna or, you know I say Krishna is a word that means beauty so Krishna consciousness means how to have a beautiful consciousness and people like that we are giving people the highest beauty we're giving people the color the flowers what they're missing in life people won't admit how lonely they actually are but they they are to a certain degree uh, I can say that because I would say I was one of them even though everything is going good everything is going nice materially everything is excellent and perfect but still there's this emptiness why because we're naturally meant to be servants of the supreme or meant to uh, be instruments of compassion for the supreme so let's do what we can to get connected uh, more and more there's a verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita Malihana karese bijo arapana shavankirta jala karaya se chana. That bhakti or devotional service is like a seed. And you are the gardener. And you got to plant that seed. And the way you grow that seed is through the water of hearing and chanting regularly. Then that seed will surely sprout. So, what does hearing and chanting really mean? Chanting is many things. It's of course chanting the Maha Mantra, but even chanting the science of Krishna consciousness to others. Even it can be bridge type of chanting where you're just explaining people uh, the problems of the world and how there's a solution and trying to bring them up to a higher reality. This is also chanting. We have to always have this consciousness of constantly chanting. Uh, putting in good vibrations into the world rather than negative vibrations prajalpa it's very difficult but it's very possible with good association and hearing is so important hearing it's explained in the purports of Srila Prabhupada that if you're sleeping at night it's not if, if someone comes into a house it's not their sight it's not their smell that's really gonna wake you up it's actually the noise the sound the sound vibration is what wakes you up alarm clock we don't have a smell clock so sound vibration is extremely powerful and I was just thinking about this that just like two cell phones I have a cell phone here my mom has a cell phone 50 60 miles away and somehow those two cell phones are able to connect through a subtle level or even a TV and then you have satellites and somehow there's this frequency that brings in the channel so there's this subtle plane of existence and when you chant Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare you're also connecting not just on a subtle level but on a completely pure spiritual level to a higher level of existence I remember when I first first seriously started chanting and I realized it's 6 p.m. 7 p.m. right now I'm chanting and I'm putting this sound vibration out there but there's people in India right now who are just waking up and they're also chanting so maybe my sound vibration is connecting to their sound vibration and something must be going on I was having those types of uh, thoughts and it was really inspiring me and I, I found out that these thoughts are actually true that we are all connected through this sound it keeps us together actually I would say that Srila Prabhupada the founder Acharya of this movement is the only uh, is the only living being to ever be worshipped constantly all around the world almost day by day minute by minute you can say somewhere some someone is singing Guru Puja somewhere someone is 
saying Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale constantly Srila Prabhupada is being glorified because he is Krishna's very dear servant and Krishna is the source of it all so we have to do our part in trying to glorify Srila Prabhupada more and more Krishna consciousness but also Prabhupada consciousness reading about Prabhupada's pastimes his stories his struggles his triumphs his journeys we feel the momentum we feel what he has been through and it's uh, very wonderful that we have the great opportunity and fortune to be part of this uh, film premiere Hare Krishna uh, formerly called the Acharya which is all about Srila Prabhupada and we get to see nice footage of him and just think that we are inviting people to the movie theater to see Srila Prabhupada and they get a chance to uh, witness a pure devotee of the Lord on a big screen so amazing our, our movement is uh, offering so much right now during this time it's getting close to finals in school so people are uh, graduating and uh, yesterday some kid came to the table and he was really excited to get the books he was so happy and he got like maybe four or five and he even like bowed down and said like namaste and I told him say Hare Krishna and he's like Hare Krishna and uh, I'm like so are you graduating soon and he's like yeah yeah I'm graduating and I said to him that that's nice you know you're graduating school and these books will help you graduate this world because they have all the information in it to help you overcome this uh, ocean of calamities that we've been discussing today and we have to be very thankful to Srila Prabhupada for bringing this to us sometimes when I when I hear the conch shells blowing I, it sounds like it sounds like the sirens and the horns of the Jala Dutta ship and I think about that and I think about how when Srila Prabhupada was trying to climb that Jala Dutta ship he was grabbing onto those ropes and by grabbing onto those ropes he was able to free us from the ropes of material existence and the only support he had when he landed was just a wooden cane and he didn't know whether to go left or to go right but still he, he took a big step for us so we have to take many more steps for him and that's why we step out our, out of our comfort zone and we step into people's lives and we give them a step up give them an opportunity to realize their true nature I was also thinking that many uh, many companies they make they make these franchises out of superheroes you know you, you got like Batman there's a whole franchise around it you got Superman there's a whole franchise around it I was just thinking about how Prabhupada he made a, a spiritual franchise out of Lord Krishna who's actually the true hero people had no idea about who really Krishna is but Srila Prabhupada has brought Krishna to life to so many people and it's only going to get better it's only going to get stronger and we're only going to go for longer so we have to uh, we have to really be thankful and be grateful so I'm just going to quickly recap things I was talking about I was saying that there's three things that cannot be hidden for long the sun, the moon and the truth so atheists currently they try to cover up the truth but it can't be long hidden soon it will be revealed and I was speaking about why we go out and give people the holy name why do we go out give them prashadam why do we go out and distribute books because it actually saves lives I was talking about Prahlad Maharaj and how Lord Narsingha Dev is so fearful that even the demigods were afraid to step to Lord Narsingha Dev so fearful 
Prahlad Maharaj walked right up to Lord Narsingha Dev and he said, I'm not fearful of this form, my Lord. I'm actually fearful of material existence. And then we were speaking about all the calamities to material existence. How people are suffering from caffeine overdose, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, religious violence, greed, death, racial violence. And we're speaking how Krishna consciousness actually solves each and every single one of these elements just through just by one shot it serves many different purposes so our movement is very relevant because it can help a lot of people in the world people associate so much with their skin color and then they start a racial violence with someone else so i was speaking about how when i went to the festival of colors nobody was black or white everyone looked like a rainbow and that's how the world should be we need to bring the colors out more um, and this is what our movement is offering and then I briefly spoke about a new project we have going on called BeAMonk.org where people can actually sign on to this website, fill out an application to live in a temple for a few days, kind of like a retreat. And how we've already had some success stories uh, from different students in different schools who are just in love with this place, can't believe this place, how they used to uh, wake up with people yelling at them and now they wake up and hear people singing to them the sounds of God how they used to wake up with filth and now they wake up with flowers offered to God and on top of that they get to eat like kings and queens uh, and how we have a success story where one bhakta has moved in full time and he's chanting 16 rounds shaved up and very happy very blissful and uh how these books are offering people a complete graduation out of this material world. So I think I'll stop there. I was wondering if there's any questions or comments, corrections. I would like to hear them. Yes. You met one couple in the Spanish area? You presented a book to him, Science of Self-Realization. He was inspired to get the book. You you, you spoke to him about beamonk.org. <laughs> you, you said that if, if uh, you come, then you can say bye-bye to your girl. Okay, that's very good. Yeah, it's nice. Um, yeah, it's so wonderful how we're uh, offering people a completely different lifestyle that they don't even know about, really. Like, if you uh, fill out a, a, the, in, in college, they have this uh, paper, career assessment, where you get to see which career suits you the best. So they have like doctor, lawyer, engineer, software, designer, all these different things based on your skills, talents, hobbies, etc. But there's no check mark for monk or swami or, you know, they don't have these things. They don't have uh, these types of goals and aspirations. And this is what's needed because people, this is an extremely good training. You know, school might give you education, but living in a temple will give you character it'll give you integrity it'll give you morality it'll give you happiness it'll give you bliss um, all these different mental anxieties calamities they go away I just heard that there's this huge rock star his name is Chris Cornell he's a part of a huge band called uh, Sound, Soundgarden and uh, he has millions of followers he has beautiful wife, beautiful kids, all the money, all the wealth, all the fame, all the success. Today he committed suicide. And it's just, why? Why did that happen? You have all these things, why aren't you happy? Isn't this the goal? It's obviously not the goal, because the goal is Krishna. He's the real wealth, he's the real jewel, he's the real diamond. We just gotta dig for him, and we'll, we'll find him. And, then he can shine and light up our lives. 
So Krishna consciousness is so amazing uh, because we deal with the aspects of beauty. One time a uh, family came to the book table and they were from London and they said that they first visited the Buddhist temple and right after they visited the Hare Krishna temple and they told me that this Buddhist temple was uh, it was nice but it was kind of boring everybody was just looking at the ground no one said hi to them uh, there was no sound no color the lights were dark uh, it was just a different type of mood and they came with their kids but then they went to the Hare Krishna temple Bhakti Vedanta Manor and they were like wow animals music people happy smiling dancing laughing what is spiritual life really supposed to be? Is it supposed to be where you just become quiet and become like a rock and that's it? Or is it supposed to be happy, joyous and like a celebration? Uh, so it just resonates with the soul. What is correct? This is correct. Krishna consciousness is such a good feeling. And it's, uh, it's spiritual. It's almost like a party. But our party, we don't party at night. We party in the morning. Mangalarti party wakes you up from slumber. Yeah. You also have another realization? Prabhupada said that when you chant Hare Krishna, you read somewhere that when you chant Hare Krishna, the mantra goes seven times around the world. Some physicists are also saying that when we chant, we can change our DNA, ourselves. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen so many examples. Prabhupada said, I turn all these hippies into happies people who are taking drugs and intoxications and doing all kinds of things now they're blissful living a spiritual life even uh, people who have left Christianity uh, they come to Krishna consciousness and they fall in love with Jesus Christ more through Krishna consciousness than they did with Christianity because we glorify Jesus Christ as a true saint and we uh, really embrace all his qualities so um, this is a movement for character building and compassion and ultimately love of God. Prabhupada said that you can judge a religion based on how much you're developing love of God. It's not sectarian. It's not that this way is right and your way is not. No, uh, it's all about love. How much are you really falling in love? You have to fall in love more and more. We have to wake up and just uh, be immersed in, in, in that feeling of love. And by loving Krishna, Krishna is the source of it all. So by loving Krishna, we automatically love all. We automatically, automatically see Krishna in everything. And uh, we really sympathize with people. Somebody is angry or mad at you. Or saying some hurtful things uh, the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita especially the three modes of material nature allows you to take a step back and make you realize that this person he's he, he's going through so much right now and who am I to react let him just express himself it's kind of like like let's say there's a king and he lives in a big palace and outside there's a gate and there's some homeless man outside the gate and he's shouting and yelling at the king like oh you you horrible king blah 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 the king is not going to take offense because he sees that person's condition that this person is in a very vicarious homeless state and he feels actually sympathy for that man shouting and saying all these things to him he doesn't feel anger or resentment because the king knows what he has he knows that he's on this side with the palace 
same way we we got to know what we got we got krishna we got krishna consciousness so those that get mad angry we got to like understand that they're going through so much just imagine how much stress i mean sometimes we get stressed here if we're getting stressed here then imagine them getting stressed there it's probably tenfold hundredfold however fold so let's uh let's feel more empathy and compassion it's hard it's very hard but it's practical it's possible we just got to practice more and more then we can really live these teachings walk the talk you want to say something else i'm gonna shiksha your reading such you know swami's version Everybody in the material world is looking for Krishna for love. But because they don't find it, they think they can find it by being a big man, etc. Sports, politics, yeah. All these desires will never make them happy because heart is completely empty only goal only Krishna can fulfill all the desires in the heart they're completely satisfied I, I can I can uh, I can personally attest to that I had so many material desires when coming to Krishna consciousness but coming to Krishna consciousness has fulfilled each and every single one of those material desires in ways I could never even imagine and I just think, wow, Krishna, you're like amazing. You, how did you, how did you do that? You know, they say that rasa. This is actually something uh, quoted by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. It's mentioned in the purports of Bhagavatam that rasa is something beyond imagination, but feels good in the heart. So that's rasa. So we try to fantasize and visualize so much but and so let's say you fantasize and visualize and then actually that fantasy of visualization comes true you're gonna get a little rasa but real rasa is when it is even beyond your imagination and that's what Krishna does he always does things that are beyond your imagination so it's good to maybe think and remember Krishna and fantasize maybe certain things, but maybe it's even better to just dig into the service, dig into really trying to spread this movement, and Krishna will then fulfill everything. He will really fantasize all your desires and make all your dreams come true. Krishna is the source of all, so He owns all, and He can give you anything. She, uh, he gave Srila Prabhupada the world. He gave Srila Prabhupada the entire world. And we have so many great saints in this movement currently. Just by seeing some of these personalities, it's, uh, it's amazing. You don't see that in the material world. So even if Krishna consciousness let's just hypothetically say is not the all in all and materialism is I can't find someone in the material world that I would want to serve as much as I see in the movement of spiritual teachings like Srila Prabhupada and his, and his disciples when I see their qualities, I think, man, the, the qualities of these individuals, they are the real rock stars. I don't want to serve these rock stars. I want to serve these rock stars because such, uh, such compassion, simplicity, eloquence, good nature, good manners, they're perfect gentlemen. And that's what Srila Prabhupada wanted from this movement was to create perfect gentlemen and gentlewomen. 
So all, all we have to do now is just give it out to others and do it in a palatable, palatable pleasing way. Just, ta you know, be creative. Think of different ways. How can I, how can I give it to this person or that person? Sometimes they say indirect preaching is the way, but actually direct preaching also is just as effective. Maybe you have to be more direct with people to really snap them out of it. Just try different things. Do what you can in order to make more and more uh, people favorable to Krishna consciousness. So I'm just going to read the verse one more time. Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmane Gavi Hastani Sunichaeva Sopake Chapandita Samadarshanaha. The humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahmana, a cow, a elephant, dog, and a dog eater. I also like how in this verse they say, learned and gentle Brahmana. Learned and gentle. It's not that a Brahmana is just learned, meaning he's just smart. That's not what is going to make him Brahmana. That's maybe half of it. But he has to be a learned and a gentle Brahmana. You got to have a gentle heart. You got to have compassion. You got to have love. That's what makes a real Brahmana. That's what makes a real Vaishnava. Having Krishna in the heart. That's what pleases Krishna when we please others. So we should do what we can to have more loving exchanges with different devotees. Dati Pradigranati, Guimakati Prichati, Bhunte Bojaita Chaivas Shadvidam Fiti Lakshanam. You offer people gifts, you accept their gifts, you reveal their mind, you reveal your mind to them, you inquire from them you give them prashad sanctified food you offer prashad actually prashad is not just sanctified food prashad means mercy so you offer them mercy you give them mercy so you have a question go ahead Is there is there a microphone? You think it's open? Mm -hmm. I said sometimes that when we try to preach or give someone a book, sometimes we do it indirect or direct. Yeah, direct preaching. Indirect preaching is when you use the buzzwords. Yoga, meditation, higher consciousness, things like that. Uh, direct preaching is when you go more direct. You say things like three modes of material nature. You talk about how God is a person. God is tinted blue. Uh, God is Krishna. There's a spiritual world. He likes to play with cows, he plays hide and go seek and tag and runs around and plays soccer with fruits and uh, eats bale and has laddus and uh, gulab jamuns and has all these friends and uh, God sometimes wants to forget he's God so it just becomes a little boy and just plays in the forest. That's kind of direct. But people like to hear that. One time I was at the book table. And I, I don't know what made me say this, but uh, I gave someone a Bhagavad Gita and they said, can you tell me really quickly what this book is about or what this will teach me? And uh, I said, this book will teach you that God likes to play a flute. And he said, wow, that really explains a lot actually. You know, he was very intrigued by that because it actually does say a lot that if God likes to play a flute, then he's a person and he's cool and he's hip and he's a musician. Um, 
just you know we never know when to go direct or indirect this has to be a connection with the super soul when you have that uh, strong connection then you're able to really relate to that person in an individual way because the spiritual world is full of, full of variety so there's a variety of people here and everyone's at a different level so it's the job of the preacher of the teacher to meet them at their level and take them higher Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna.